Hey guys, welcome to Wild Company and I. Today we're socially isolating in our garden. Uh, I'm with my girl, Sam. Hi, hi. Uh, just a quick video today. I'm practicing bow drill and showing the girls friction, fire, fire friction. And I thought, why not make a video of it? I made a video on a wide. So it's not going to be a how to, or even potentially a, a, a best get demonstration of it. It's just how I'll be showing how you do it, how I do it. And Hopefully it's successful. I'll try and keep it to as many cuts as possible. So I'll, I'll be truthfully honest how many times it takes me. These kits today are, I don't want to say tried and tested, but they're dry. So I've got a few different kits over the years to have that I've kept for one reason or another. The first kit, first one from collecting the materials on the day, etc, etc, etc. And it's also good to have just some dry ones to show people so I see the bow drill. Uh, I have found some materials to make the bird's nest from home. Uh, I have some flax fibres, which is nice. I have some raffia palm, and I'm going to use that there combined to make my bird's nest. And I also have some birch bark, if needs be, to add into it. Uh, and some cedar bark. I'll show you now how you prepare the fibres from cedar bark. Uh, to fluff it up. This is the, the outer bark of a cedar tree and on the inside the inner layer you can use your back your knife to scrape up so you can uh, to get fibres. So I'll bring you in now closer and show you how that looks. I'm now going to take some of the cedar bark which I mentioned earlier on uh, and scrape up some of the fibres and hopefully use it as part of my uh, nests for my embers. It doesn't really go to flame but it's an it's a ember extender. It's very good at helping the embers smolder for longer so it's a good way to get a larger ember. Help you to give more heat to the nest. It's very good especially if your nest is slightly damp. But this nest should be quite dry so hopefully that will be a problem. So you just get your back your knife. Well, you can use your blade, it doesn't really matter but you back your knife with your blade and you scrape it. And what you'll see is as you scrape it, these fibres will collect up. Like this here, this fiber I'll bring it up close to you so now and show you. So, what you end up with is a fibrous inner bark fruit material, which is very good at, as I say, extending the ember. So, I'll use that as my initial place in my, my nest to add the ember. So that's not the nest prepared, have it close by. When you get the ember, uh, you have a few moments when you get the ember to actually uh, let it develop and then lift it. Don't, don't be rushing, get your breath because you'll probably be out of breath after doing the drill. And take a few moments, get yourself prepared and then transfer it. Oh, it is quite windy today, so that's another obstacle. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I said, it's not a how-to, but I probably should explain at least the theory behind bow drill and the components of a bow drill kit, or how, in theory, what parts you need. So I'll start off with uh, some of the parts required for a bow drill and discuss different things. So the first thing you need is the drill itself, the spindle. This is a piece of wood that will spin around, causing a friction on one end. That's why this says tapered. This says tapered so that the friction is all isolated to the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to go into what type of wood to use. Everyone's got their opinion on that, everyone's got their preference. Quite a lot of mine is lime, so it is. There's a bit of lime in here, mostly lime, I think, to answer the spindles line, because lime seems to grow quite straight and in the shape of a spindle to start off with. But as I say, there's no real right or wrong in my opinion. Everyone's got their own thoughts on how it works. Uh, as you can see, depends on the day what you can get. 
different size spindles. I prefer a moderately long one, it's thinner, whereas some people prefer fatter ones. And the shorter, the shorter it is, the harder it is to do, but as I say, it's possible on all spindles. So, these are called the spindles or the, the drills. You need a hearth, a hearth board, and this is, again, dry wood. And the idea behind this is, is you put the spindle onto the hearth and spin it out. The third part of the set up is um, a bearing block. So the idea behind a bearing block is you want to have something to put on top to, to help so you can spin it. Obviously you can use a bit of wood on the day. Uh, I actually have in my kit a piece of antler. And the piece of antler is designed so that the top of the bearing block fits in there. It's just hand like that. And it gives you a nice good strong grip to bow with, okay? The final component which is required is the actual bow. So the bow is a stick and a bit of power cord or string or shoelace or whatever and the idea behind it is, is you can twist the bow, the drill and then when you start spinning it will it will spin. So that's the theory behind it first of all. So now we'll break down some more of the components. Let's say today I'm not making any of the components, I have them all here ready to do so I'm not going to that in too much detail and what I'll do is I'll try and pick the best kit and try and get an ember. Okay, as I've introduced you to the other components uh, of the bow drill, there's one more part that you need and that's you need something to collect the embers and below. It can be a leaf, it can be a bit of birch bark, it can be a bit of wood, it can be a bit of lower, whatever, it doesn't matter. I use a bit of the cedar bark because I have the hand and it's a nice flat surface to collect the ember. And then once you get your ember, if you get your ember, <laughs> when, uh, you will take the dust which will have a glowing ember in it and you will transfer it to some sort of nest. And say so I'm going to try and transfer my nest to uh, some flax fibre and some raffia pan because I have at home and say so I'm going to actually tear up some birch bark and put it amongst the well so to get the flame a good hot flame. Once that happens you then transfer it to your fire and hopefully light your fire from the ember. So there's two places. The first bit is get, get the ember, that's the hard thing. Transfer the ember and blow it to flame and then again transferring that to the fire. So there's multiple places this can feel. So generally speaking in the past I'd only have practiced getting the ember and blowing it to flame. I wouldn't necessarily transfer it to fire. So we'll try today to see what we can do. Okay guys, I've brought you in a bit closer to half now to show you uh, some of the more intricate parts of the, the fire. So as you can see here, I have some holes already used in the past, uh, but they've got to the stage now where there's very little left in them. So there's, so there's no point using them again. So I'm going to start a new one, Sam. I think there's space for one more here. So basically how you start off a notch is you, you want to start with your knife, you do. You just want to cut a groove in. Like so. And that's just a place literally to guide your bow originally. Your, not your bow, your, your drill. So that's just so it gives it somewhere to start off from. Uh, and we'll go ahead and see if we can burn this in as we can. So, the traditional stance is one foot up, you twist this here through so it's nice and tight. You want to place it in the notch. You want to kind of get your burn block in your hand nice and comfortable. You want to use your shin to support your wrist here to give you a bit of stability because this here can get quite tedious. And then you want to Find what's comfortable for you. Find what's comfortable and work from there. So I'm gonna go ahead here guys and burn this here block hopefully and fine tune my t tension on my bow. So 
So as you can see here, it's starting to make powder ready and it's starting to blacken. So uh, I'll work on that as well now. Actually, as you can see, I've just burnt through my antler top there. So I have it's been used one too many times. I think so I'm going to have to make a wooden burn block now. So bear with me. Okay. So as you can see now, the new hole's burned in. So all I do is I take my multi-tool, bring up my saw, uh, anyway I cut a V into just the edge of the thing. So I do is I get it and I just cut a V just to just get to the edge of the about one third away into the, the drill of it. Just cut the edge. You can force it just as your knife if you haven't got a, a saw on you. And then all I do is widen up the channel. Okay, so now I've got the saw to allow for the collection of the dust. So, now it's time to get ready. So, so you might have a nice flat piece of something to sit your ember on. Make sure it's nice and flat and smooth. Make sure you can get comfortable. And well, I'll just go and see what happens here, sure. So, yeah. I was originally going to abandon this here, but I think we can maybe have another one more go at it before making our hand drill or our protection. So, let's see. So at the start you might just go nice and slow and steady, find your temple, build up some dust, and you'll see some smoke starting. Some heat coming through the handle this year, so it's not ideal, it's not, but over with it. So, in this case there was plenty of dust you can see, but just no ember. I kind of I kind of spun off to be honest before I got a chance to go fast. So we'll try again. We'll try again, see what happens. I've tried this one text well, unless I have to change my kit over. Parkour trying to slip now. Just been training. Yep. So if your parkour starts to slip because it starts to get shiny, you can just take off the shine off your wood so you can your stick stick. Make sure it's nice and round, nice and straight. And again, off the tip, you can take off the shine off the tip as well if you can. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get a spin. I might have to change the park over. Oh. Right, I'll have to change the park parkour to come back to these guys. Plenty of smoke but November that time. And we'll go again. Nope, plenty of smoke, no fire again. November. Okay guys. Uh had a first go there, one of my old kits and I think it was starting to be a bit punky at one end so it was so didn't quite 
getting lots of smokes, lots of lots of dust, just no ember. Uh, I've now changed the string on the drill or on the bow. Got a brand new hearth that I've had sitting for a while now, and one of the bigger drills. Uh, so what we'll do now is, is we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, all being well, we'll get it. This is the one I used to use in the past. It was you can see here, and as you can see. It's just over the years, it's bore away, so it, has, it was really nice to was in your hand, you know, you held it really nice, it's here in your hand, it was great for grips it was, but it's just wore away over the years, so I had to make a new one, so well, maybe something else that I can be used for, maybe some toggles or something like that, waste not whatnot. So, as you can see, lots of dust, I've uh, got a new board, I've got to burn it in now, so I'm, uh, a lot of a bigger drill this time, a lot longer, uh, and see how that goes, so I'll keep you posted. Back to see me feel again, girls. Back to Yeah, that's feeling good. It's looking good. It's burning nicely, we're getting dust we are. What's in tail? Let's cut a notch and see. Okay, so we've got a notch, we've got a baseboard. Here goes nothing. Oh guys, I wasn't recording, so I wasn't. Oh, for... well, here's the ember, okay, so let's see if I can transfer it. Is that my hand over here? Yep. Can you see it again, yeah? Uh, yep, I can see you doing that. Is it, yeah?
see guys, it's off the ember. So I'll it practice, practice, practice. Yes. Yeah. Okay guys, I've got an ore notch uh, burnt in. Uh, the last one I got this bit, this, year, this the one here you didn't see. Uh, I forgot to record it, but you see my fail to build the ember into flame. I wish you did so, you'll see. As I said, there's multiple places where you can fill this here So I'll go again here as well. This is the last time, I think, because this is the second bit of park going. And we'll see. So there's a lot of smoke coming. I can't see the amber just yet, so I can't. But I'm pretty sure there's one in there, so there is. Uh, I'll bring you in, you can see. It's smoking just gently cover up my sound so it doesn't get to it. So. As always, persevere, persevere, persevere. Don't give up. I don't honestly know how many times I took there. I had two different bows. A couple of different spindles, a couple of different boards. Uh, perseverance is the key here, so it is especially if you need to fire. Uh, if you keep persevering, you'll get it, as you can see. Persevere, persevere, persevere. So I used a small spindle. It was one of the ones I had for a very long time, and I think it's just had enough. It's had enough fire, so I just put that one on the fire. So happy because, to be honest. I've used it a few times now and it's just, it's not working anymore, so it's not. Uh, don't know the science behind it, don't know why, but that's just the way it is sometimes. So, hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, we're trying to do as much as possible we can in the garden, me and the girls. Uh, camping and cooking and fire lighting, as you can see, the nice burn patch in the grass, but you do, you do. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, thanks for having joining us again. 